Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the invitation to come here today. Um, I apologize for speaking English, but I'm, I'm sure you will, your outcome will be a lot better when I speak English than German. So it's for your best, your own best. Um, and I'm, I, I'm not coming here with all the answers for the German system. You have a lot of experts and you know a lot more about, uh, more about that and, and have the answers, but I can share some experience from Denmark with you and maybe some of them are valid uh, for you too. Uh, just a few words about Energinet DK. We are the Danish transmission system operator for electricity and gas in Denmark. And in short, we are responsible for security of supply, both in the short term and in the long term. So we operate the system, we have to plan it for the future, to cope with all this uh, renewable energy, and we have to operate it ourselves. So we have the full responsibility. If we do a do bad planning job, we will have all the problems later on. So, so we see ourselves as the entrepreneur for the Danish government on how to make these ambitions work I in reality. Um, we own the grids, uh, we also co-own the, 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 the spot market for uh, the electricity and the gas markets and part of the European market coupling company where you are uh, participating too in Germany. We're a small company, if you compare Denmark to Germany I think it's a, with electricity and, and inhabitants it's probably about one, one twentieth of, 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 of Germany. Um, you have to see our revenue in this context too. Um, what I would like to stress is that Energinet is an independent public enterprise owned by the state. So we are fully a state-owned company owned by the Minister of Climate and Energy. Um, our finances mainly come from the grid tariff and we are a non-profit company. And I stress this because Many other TSOs in Europe are not non-profit companies and their incentives for investments and grid developments are a bit different than, than, than ours. We can take the full socio-economic criteria and base our investment calculation on this, which actually also gives us, a, a, we don't need a, we, we can cope with a regulation light because we have the right incentives to act a, uh, on behalf of the Danish society and we have very close relations to our, our ministers and, and the authorities. Well, um, a few words about the Danish system, how, how we came to the system we have today. If you go 25 years back, you'll see a Denmark with few large coal-fired power plants. Easy to handle, you could take the phone and call them and, and discuss what to do. Today we have a, a, a pattern with more than 6,000 generators. In this small country, more than 6,000 generators. That's small CHP plants, it's big uh, power plants, and a lot of wind turbines. And if you follow the, the, the increase there through uh, these years, you can see this is driven by attractive feed-in tariffs, uh, favorite grid connection conditions for, for private investors, and uh, you can almost see when we had a change of government, when we changed to a more green government, they increased the intensive, and you can see the slope of, of, of the curve there. <laughs> so the result is that by now we have 28% of the electricity consumption uh, uh, covered by wind power last year. So that's where we are now. March this year, we had a new energy agreement uh, uh, coming through Parliament. And there's a lot of initiatives, but I would just concentrate on the wind power share, where we will have uh, a 2,000 megawatt of extra wind power installed before 2020. And with these uh, extra uh, 2,000 megawatts, we will reach 50% by 2020. And this is the share of wind power energy compared to the domestic demand in Denmark. Um, and in the same in agreement, uh, energy agreement, there was expressed a long-term goal saying that we will be 100% renewable by 2050. This is not an agreement, but it's, it's, it's a vision. Um, the other vision that was expressed by our government is, is a mid-term uh, milestone, and that is that the electricity and heating sectors will be 100% renewable based 
by 2035. So from uh, from uh, 35 to 50, it is transportation and industry. So this is actually also the task. You can see the, the challenges for Inegines, that is to make this work. We have the political support. Uh, uh, it, it takes a, 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 a political will to, dis to, to, the, to decide this and a lot of courage. And then they trust in us to make it work. So now we'll see if we can make it work. But we, we still think we can. Um, how do we do it today? Um, as I said, Denmark is, is a, you know, a, a, a rather small country. Um, sorry. I'm trying to... In the middle on top. Uh, it doesn't work anymore now. No, and it it it's on top. Yeah, this? No, it's on top of the circle. In the circle, on top. Okay, up there. Okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah. We, we are a, a rather small country, and compared to the Bundesländer, I, I think in average we are smaller than, than the average of the, of the Bundesländer. Um, so we are very dependent on our neighbors. And the only way we can balance this system today is by being part of an international market. And we have had a very well-working market in the Nordic, the Nord Pool spot markets, for many years now. And uh, we have strong interconnections between to, to the north and to the south, because we have been a transit country between hydro and thermal systems for many years. So there's been a lot of trade, a lot of money to gain by trading between these two. So that's the reason for the strong interconnections. And they really help us now and integrate us in a larger area, in a larger market. Um, but we don't want to pay our neighbors to do all the balancing. We have Norwegian neighbors, and they are very good at making money, too. They know the value <laughs> of their water. So we have to create a flexible system by ourselves, to have an alternative to just pay our neighbors to do this. And um, I've just mentioned a, a few issues here, but actually the big uh, coal-fired power plants, the CHP plants, <laughs> combined heat and plow power, they can run from 100% maximum output down to 10 and some of them even five. And when I tell this to, for instance, Chinese uh, uh, power industry, they, they don't believe me. They simply don't believe me because they run straight and it's impossible to, 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 to create any flexibility. But if you create the right incentives in your market or in your regulation, you can make things happen. And that's, they are adapting. So it's not just a base load. They built for base load. But you can refit them and you can run them in the market and they, they actually behave very flexible if there's money to gain by being flexible. The other one is that, that uh, almost all our combined heat and power plants today, they are equipped with big heat accumulators, big thermos, so that you can make your, <coughs> your electricity and heat when there's a demand for electricity. And then you stop and take the heat from your heat accumulator, which makes it decoupling creates flexibility. We have even uh, installed electric boilers. So when you have excess electricity today, don't use gas and oil for making me heat, use electricity. And I know this is a violation of some thermodynamic <laughs> rules, but, but, but in a system, in a market, when the value of electricity is lower than the cost of fuel, I obey the economic law <laughs> instead, because that's more efficient. Um, the, the third one is, is I want to mention, is, is grid code, uh, um, technical grid codes for all generators, also wind power. We have seen that the commercial uh, uh, resp balance responsible parties having portfolios of power plants and offshore wind farms, they actually start using their offshore wind farm for regulation now. So they, they turn them down in the morning, being ready for the fast upper regulation when you have the morning peak. It's cheaper for them than to get into imbalance. So the value of the lost energy is lower than the value of this regulation. And we like this as TSO because that really supports the system to balance the system and makes, reduces our challenges. And we'll see a lot more of that in the future, that they actually come in and help the system instead of just being a burden for the system. The third one is, of course, to have the efficient tools in, in, in your control center. It's not an old-fashioned scatter system you need today. You, you need specialized tools for forecasting, for load balancing, and handling 6,300 distributed generators. 
You cannot call them. You have to have a system that handles this. And we have gradually built these, and we will develop them further in the future. But with these, we actually, I think, succeed pretty well today in handling this system. What about the future? We're at 28% now. We will go for 50 in 2020. And, and in, in our business, 2020, that's actually the day after tomorrow. If we talk about grid reinforcement and development of the system, and you have assets with a lifetime of 40 years, so it's, it is actually the day after tomorrow. And I, I do not have the answer of what the other 50% will be. You see, there's a question mark. And I agree with the keynote speaker today that one of our main challenges is how to create investment incentives for generators in the future. Half of the energy will be supplied by subsidized with turbines in Denmark, with a marginal uh, generation cost of zero, and then you expect the other 50% being market-driven with almost no energy, and, and, and often we have prices very, very low in the market, sometimes zero. We, we need to go into a discussion on somehow of capacity payment. This is, this w I don't think it's a personal opinion. I don't think it will work with energy-only markets. We have to find some way of, of doing this. But the main instruments we see is the strong transmission grid and interconnections to make a large market area work <coughs> together and support each other. You can even have wind supporting wind. Um, we need the flexibility in generation and consumption so that we'll have an elastic uh, demand response in the future, price elastic demand response. And we have to integrate the whole energy sector not treating electricity, transportation, heating, and other things separately. They have to go in, be planned together and, and to, to utilize the synergies between them and, and the buffer possibilities. And then to make all this work and make sure that it will happen, you need some way to control this in a smarter, more intelligent way. That's where the smart grid comes into the picture. A few words on the, 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 the grid planning. Grid planning is long-term. Everybody has to accept that. So you need a long-term plan. This is just one example on how we did it in Denmark. Together with the authority, we made a, 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 a report several years ago on where are the possible sites for offshore wind farms, what are the priorities, what are the costs, and we are pretty sure that when Parliament decides on the next big wind farm, mm -hmm. they will look into this uh, report and, 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 and we can prepare the system for this in the long term. Uh, the model we use for developing offshore wind farm has a very clear, distinctive roles. You see the TSO, we have to connect the wind farm, including the offshore platform, the cable ashore and connecting it, so that all the costs for this are socialized. And we can prepare this and start once the government decided to build a wind farm. And then it will be built. There's no stranded cost because the decision is taken. And then we have a wind farm developer and they, 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 uh, uh, they, they go into a public tendering on who can build this and, 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 and offer the lowest electricity price for the next, I think, 12, 12 years. So they win on, on a price and we build the rest. And when we are prepare the rest, there, we also make the, the, the environmental impact assessment for the wind farm because then we can do that before we know who is winning the tender. And by this, we can actually carry <coughs> such a product through in three and a half years. That's the, the latest one on 400 megawatts. Three, three and a half years from tender to operation. A little on the, the transmission grid. Being a small country, we have to have very good neighbors, be friendly to all our neighbors, cooperate <laughs> with all our neighbors, and we do. We are uh, uh, extending our, our grid now with a, a new connection to Norway and the attractive hydro system. We are uh, 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 <coughs> negotiating with, with our colleagues in Holland on a Cobra cable. We have a very close uh, cooperation with, with uh, Tenet Germany on, on the, the AC development of, on the AC and coordinate with the German grid plan. We um, have a good cooperation with 50 Hertz here in Berlin on the Krieger's Flag project where we join interconnector and an offshore wind farm. We are uh, uh, expanding the capacity here on Earth and with Svensson Kraftnet. So we are always following all the opportunities. And the latest one is we're trying to find, see if we can find a business case in a cable to England.
and have a good cooperation with our English neighbors. What is special in Denmark is that there was a decision on guidelines for building transmission uh, uh, grids uh, a couple of years ago. Everything has to be underground cable for the future. We're a rich country, so we can just afford this. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three, three more yes. Um, so the very last overhead line we will build is the one here. It's, we call call this the backbone in in in, uh, in 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 the system. We will double this overhead line, and then within the next 20 years, we will cable all the 132 and 150 cable kV grid. That's 3,000 kilometers that will be cabled in this period, and then after that, we will start building new lines in cable in the 400 kV too. But we have to do a little more research before we do that. Um, to keep the, the 400 kV as an overhead grid, we also do some embellishment on, on six different places uh, in Denmark. And this has been decided, also the, the, the guidelines, in very close cooperation with our politicians and the authorities. And now it's accepted by even engineers in our company. <laughs> uh, it's accepted that, that government have a say in this. In the old times, we just decided ourselves. Uh, we have been very focused on having a good dialogue with both authorities, neighbors, and citizens in this process. And they actually go as planned. There are no delays. Now it works. A few words on balancing the system. With a lot of uh, renewable in the electricity sector, and this is the, 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 the energy demand in Denmark, we need to substitute fossil fuels in the other sectors too. And the result of this is that we can reduce the total energy consumption, but electricity consumption will increase. You, you make electricity the backbone of the whole energy system. Just an illustration on how you can use your gas system to create flexibility in your electricity system. And I know you have projects in Germany too on converting electricity to, to, to gas, store it, use it for heat, for transportation, or even back uh, again uh, for power generation. And, and, and in the future, we will see the, the, the efficiencies increase magnificently, and we use the, the heat, the, the, the waste heat for uh, district heating, so we're not throwing this away. And we have a storage, we own a storage, underground storage, and the, the, the energy in this storage is about one third of the annual electricity consumption in Denmark. So I think with this tool, we will succeed in this task. Without, it is, it's a bit doubtful. <laughs> the last one, one slide on, on uh, the smart grid. We are launching a big uh, demonstration project on the island of Bornholm. Bornholm is about one hundredth of Denmark. And here we have a very good test, test facility with 50% wind power today. And here we will test all these uh, 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 different aspects of, of, of wind power. And here we will introduce a new market, a five minute local market with new prices every five minutes. As we heard in the keynote today, market and and transparency and price signals will be very important to create this uh, uh, reaction. So, the last one is the conclusions. Strong international transmission grid, efficient markets, coherent energy systems, high flexibility in both generation and demand, and a revised power system control architecture, which we would call smart grid. And it takes a lot of good international coordination to manage this. We cannot do that on our own. And it creates the right incentives for both market and also regulation. Otherwise, you won't make it happen. Thank you very much. <laughs>